Do you want to add subtle camera movements to make your scenes created in OpenTunes more realistic? Then stay tuned as we combine multiple camera movements to build a scene in OpenTunes. Hello, today we'll be looking at adding additional camera movements to the already added camera shots in the scene to simulate the environment that you're in. I've already added some basic camera moves to a scene using the fake camera technique that I discussed in a previous tutorial. If you missed that, you might want to take a look at it. Okay, so I've taken 20 seconds of audio from a well-known scene from Dumb and Dumber, sketched a quick sketch in OpenTunes and added some basic camera movements to simulate the camera moving between the characters. Let's take a look. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <coughs> guys, guys, guys! Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio or something? Okay, so what we're going to do next is to add additional camera movements to simulate the car bumping along the road without having them affect the current camera changes. So the way I do that is I'd add a new level for the additional camera changes and I'll call this EnvCam because it's to simulate the environment that we're in. I'll extend this all the way to the end, 501. So again, if you right click on the frame, Choose time stretch. Instead of being lasting just one frame, it lasts 501 frames. So this level will add movements to the camera in addition to the current camera. So we need to know the relative position of it. So the best way to do that is to add a little marker to the frame. And the way I like to do it is to choose just a line. We'll put it against the corner. So you can see its relative position. So we'll make that a blue colour so it stands out differently from the main camera. And then we'll just add a number of keys to simulate the car moving. And then if we click this little button at the bottom of all of the keys, and that'll repeat the movement of the keys to the end of the scene. Okay, if we just play that we should see it moving around. Yep, that looks fine. So what we need to do is to have the level affect the actual camera. Okay, we can already see the real camera is hanging off the fake camera that we used to set up the position of the camera earlier. And all we need to do is plug in the environmental camera in the middle so it also affects the main camera as well as the original camera moves. So let's take a look at that. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio or something? That's not too bad, but it's moving slightly jittery because of because I put some keys on two frames that live on singles, and it's moving quite a lot more than perhaps it should do. So I'll just adjust that now. And if we go to the function editor and look at column five. And if we adjust some of these values to make them slightly smaller, I'll do that on the uh, Function Curves editor. Again, if you right click, choose Fit, you get to see all the values on the screen at once. So across the top are the frames going from 1 to 9, and on the left hand side, you can see the values go from negative to positive. So all we need to do, if we highlight a couple of these, and bring them down, Bring some of these up. And perhaps adjust them a little bit. And let's see how that looks.
Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Guys, guys, guys! It's not too bad. It's still quite fast, but I think we can adjust that. And again, we can see how the movements, show the vibrations of the car on the road, work independently from the main camera that chooses which person to look at in the scene. So that shows how you can add camera movements across the whole scene using the repeating button and use one of these kind of effects for other movements that last the whole scene. For instance, it could be for a boat rocking in the water or a train clattering along the tracks or even to simulate a handheld camera that's moving slowly as you hold it in your hand. So basically it's for scene length repeating moves. So one final camera movement you might want to add is for a single one-off effect. For instance, an explosion or to simulate heavy footsteps, or perhaps a monster like a Godzilla or a T-Rex walking. But I'll add one in here just to simulate hitting a bump in the road. So let's add a new level. I'm call this one FX Cam. Because it's to add one-off effects. And again, we'll extend this to the full length of the scene. Okay, and again, we need to add another mark onto the level so it can recognize where this movement is relative to the camera. So again, I'll add another plus. And I'll hold down the shift key as I draw the line to get a straight line. And I'll just move that onto there and change the color to be green just so it looks different from the main red camera and the blue left camera there. So let's go to where we want the bump in the road. I'll put it here and let's adjust the camera. Okay, so what we need to do is to add this new camera into this chain. Here it is, FX cam. I'm just chain it in the middle. The order doesn't really matter because they all just combine with each other. And then we'll see how that looks. Okay, I can see a small bump in the road. I don't think it was quite big enough, so we'll adjust that. And the first thing I'll do is I'll delete all of the east-west values because we want the car to go up and down only, not left and right. And then I'll remove the other column. So the only column visible is the north-south. So that when we go to the function editor, we only see the one value. If I do fit, then you can see the values I've set. So if we make the view slightly smaller, we can then drag these points a little bit further apart. Let's see how that looks. Yep, that's fine. So let's take a look at the whole scene by expanding the markers to the first and last frames. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Guys, guys, guys! Fellas, you think we could Listen to the radio or something. So that's how you can combine three different types of camera movement into a single view of a scene. By having them on separate levels, you can move them independently of each other, changing your mind on the focused area of the camera, the severity of the camera shake, or repositioning the one-off effects and they'll combine into a single view. I'll be back soon with more tutorials, and that's a guarantee.